to the world champion Ooh. Laker roster. Sixth man of the year winner Montrez Harrell coming over from the Clippers. Dennis Schroeder, sixth man of the year runner-up acquired in a trade with the Thunder. And how about 11-year veteran Wesley Matthews leaving the Bucks for the Lakers. And the big man, not pal, his brother Mark. Mark Gasol coming back to the team that drafted him 13 years ago. Finally, he's back. He is back <laughs> with the Los Angeles Lakers. So listen, Danny Green was dealt last week. I want to start with Wesley Matthews. He's expected to fill Danny Green's role. Do you like this move, Brez? Oh, I do, especially when you take into account what it costs the Lakers. It's what, what is called the biannual exception. It's about $3.5 million for this upcoming season. That's a good value, especially when you consider the average NBA salary is over $9 million. So you get that wing defender that you lost when you, when you traded Danny Green away, a guy who can also make threes. Uh, he's played for good teams, uh, especially the last couple of years with Milwaukee. Uh, probably picked up a thing or two with that franchise. And now, though, the big step up to the Lakers. Uh, will he be a starter? That's really the only question. If not, he will be very quickly coming off that bench for the Lakers. Yeah, you kind of led me to what I was going to ask, BT. One, if you like it, and do you expect him to just slide right into that, to that starting role where Danny was? You know, I love it for everything Bezahan just said. The idea that he's tough. He's a 3 and D guy. He's about a 38% three-point shooter over his career. And the fact, as Brad said, it didn't cost the Lakers a lot of money. Now, whether or not he starts, based on what one coach told me from the Lakers, first they want to see what the team is looking like. Then they want to get to practice and decide from that point on who should start, who should come off the bench. Wesley will be in there for that role. He'll have a good chance at doing that. But we won't know until maybe December, I don't know, 20th or so, something like that. BT, are you tired? Did you just agree with Brez this early in the show? <laughs> well, I agreed and disagreed. Okay. How can you not? Okay. It's Brez here. BT, you're, you're, you're falling asleep. BT, you're, you're asleep at the wheel. Late oh nights. I appreciate it. It's being nice to you right off the bat. <laughs> All right, and uh, it's now official. Uh, the Lakers and Cavs, that deal is done. Sending JaVale McGee. To Cleveland, thank you, JaVale, for all you did Good the stuff. last yep. few years. We appreciate it. A couple years in exchange for Jordan Bell and Alfonso McKinney. The deal is all about making cap space for the Lakers to do a bigger move. And Brez, BT, Marc Gasol is now a Laker. Different than JaVale and Dwight, but at 35, he can still defend. Uh, high IQ on the basketball court, a brilliant passer, and now they have that five that can bring you outside the three-point line. Brez, he shoots 38% from three. He's really That's changed his entire game. Uh, do you like it? I, I do. And you talk about uh, JaVale McGee and Dwight Howard, guys who gave the Lakers a great year, helped them get to that championship. But then again, they weren't used that much in the actual finals. And, and, and JaVale really wasn't used after the first round. Remember, Markeith Morris started uh, being put in the starting lineup in his place in that second round against the Houston Rockets. Now you bring on a guy like Marcus Saul, different from both those guys because he can shoot outside the paint, period. He, he's got three-point touch. He's worked hard on it, too. It's not like he, he was like Pow, who could always shoot outside from day one. Uh, now you have a guy who's really worked on being outside that arc, can draw the defense out, and can still block shots and get some rebounds as well. And, and BT, you go from a vertical game with JaVale and Dwight, where it was all about lobs, it wasn't about spacing the floor, uh, protecting the rim, to Mark Gasol. Do you like the fit? I like it a lot. One thing he can do is, he's not a bad defender. And let's not forget, he was the deepest player of the year, I think, a couple of years ago. It's different than what... Dwight Howard did and Javel, they block shots. He's more of a guy that uses his body, gets in good position. And one thing I kept thinking about, there are a lot of really good centers from Europe. He's a European center and he knows how these guys play and how they kind of flop at times. So perhaps he would just flop right back. It'd be a flopping game between the European centers <laughs> because they'll play good defense against each other. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're getting excited. We're not done yet. Sixth man of the year, staying in LA. But he's changing teams. I know you guys couldn't believe it when it went down. Montrez Harrell leaving the Clippers for the purple and gold. He averaged 18.6 points per game last season, 58% from the field. He's the only player with more than 1,000 points and 400 rebounds off the bench each of the last two seasons. And he led the NBA with 28 double-doubles during that span. It's official. Laker fans rejoice. We welcome Montrez Harrell to the show. Thanks for being here. I'm sure it's been a long couple of days. How you doing? Doing good. Doing good. How are you? I'm doing great. So happy to have you. When you hear Montrez Harrell of the Los Angeles Lakers, how does that sound? Uh, 
It's got a great ring to it, sounds like to me. <laughs> you ever picked yourself in that purple and gold? Because it's here. Uh, I, I got a couple of edits that's been done. Uh, <laughs> a lot of people that do animations for me have been doing, doing some great jobs for me. <laughs> I know. Isn't Twitter and social media great? Like, the minute you signed, there was, like, you in a jersey. It was pretty awesome. Man, fo photo uh, shopping and editor now is crazy. <laughs> so, Trez, can you share what went into your decision to potentially pass up more money to play in another city or, or, or to leave the Clippers where you had so much success to join the Lakers? Uh, you know, my choice uh, was really just, uh, you know, from my inner circle, uh, my family, uh, you know, just talking and looking over the decisions that we had on the table. Um, and we just felt like uh, just coming and playing the purple and gold was the best choice. And, uh, you know, I definitely felt like it was the best choice for me, so that's what we went with. And, you know, I'm happy to be a Laker. From the moment the season ended, were you talking with your family and your inner circle about the next step? No, no. As soon as the season ended, um, I actually went home and, and took the time to actually grieve and, and be with my family and actually uh, mourn the loss, uh, loss of my grandmother. Um, and then after that, um, I just be, was being a dad um, as I'm continuously still doing, man. Um, that's all I was doing, just being around my kids and, and just that love and that energy. Um, that's all I've been doing. And, and when free agency came about, that's when, uh, you know, I started getting into the talks um, with my agent. But, you no, know, I, I left the basketball to, you know, what I've done and uh, what I've produced and left out there. And that's all I could do. Yeah, thoughts and prayers to you and your family. I know you lost your grandmother in July while you were in Orlando. Uh, what did she mean to you? Um, everything. Um, everything in the entire world. Um, I still uh, have multiple, you know, pieces with her. Um, everything that I do is, um, you know, going to praise her name um, and, you know, continue to take care of my family and my loved ones I've been doing, um, you know, since I was 16, 17. And um, it's still tough to this day. Um, wow. But, you know, it's, it's still going to be one of those, um, you know, growing processes, one of those things that I'm going to have to take one day at a time. Yeah, I appreciate you sharing that, and there's no question she's uh, very, very proud of you. Now we transition to basketball. You know, how excited are you for this opportunity to play with LeBron James, an, an all-time great? Uh, I'm extremely and, uh, you know, really, really uh, honored um, once, and, you know, I'm ready to get going. Honestly, man, I can't wait for training camp to kick off and, you know, actually, you know, throw that practice jersey on there and we go in there and, and get to work, really. Trez, how many times have you visualize running that high pick and roll with Braun over the last couple of days? Man, I, I've been visiting high pick and rolls, uh, baseline plays, uh, all of it, lobs, everything, man. Um, you know, uh, like I said, I'm just ready to get going, man. This, this is a great feeling, and I'm just, you know, happy to be here. I hear you on that. Listen, so you play against Anthony Davis these past five years. He's in New Orleans and then L.A., played him four times last year, to now playing with the game's most versatile big. What do you envision that looking like, and how does your game complement his? Like I said, it, I'm just doing anything and everything I can to help complement these guys what they already do well, man. They, they've they already shown and proven that they can win a championship um, without the you know pieces that we've added this year. Uh, so I'm just coming in looking to do anything I can to complement that chemistry that these guys already have built. Trez, we're a Laker set here, and even we were unanimous in voting you sixth man of the year. So you're coming off an incredible season. You're winning that award, and, and you've always been a let my work speak for itself kind of player. But what did this award mean to you personally when you really sat back and thought about it? Um, it it's kind of one of those funny situations. Um, it's it's kind of one of those things that it kind of it kind of uh, hurts a little bit uh, just because of uh, I lost my grandmother, and we kind of had these talks, um, you know, before losing her. Um, so it's one of those things that kind of, kind of hurts and stings. Um, but at the same time, it, it just made me, you know, change my mindset and and to be even one of those players that still working. You know how they take approach to the game is going to, you know, enhance even more and just speak even more for itself. Um, you know, that's that's what I've always been known for. That's always what you know people have. Um, you know, first said has how hard he works, and I'm just going to take that to a whole extremely different level because um, it's, it's never one of those things that still hurt me to this day, um, not being able to, you know, take that trophy home and show it to my grandmother. You know, your game's evolved every single year. How driven are you to continue to improve? Um, still. 
continuously every day. Um, I'm got another one or two workouts uh, set for today. Um, so, you know, this game is continuously changing. Um, and, you know, I don't want to be one of those players that, you know, that label ass can only do this one thing because it, once you get that label, it's pretty hard to get off of you. And now it, it's, it cuts you, you know, in half as a player, you know, no matter what. And I never wanted to be looked at as one of those players coming into this game. I want to, you know, always look at myself as a person that, you know, can do multiple things in this game. Uh, we we'll never ask, um, we we'll never need it. Um, that's what. That's the way I always approach the guys, the way I always look at my game. And, you know, the things that I do well, you know, I enhance those things, but the things that I don't do well, I work uh, extremely hard on two, three times harder than what I already do well. Brez, last thing, and I got to be honest, uh, if that's okay with you, you were always a player that drove us Laker fans absolutely crazy because of how hard and how well you played against them every damn time. Uh, right. It would be like, I, I can't stand Trez, but man, I'd love him in a Laker uniform. And then when the signing was announced, Laker Twitter goes nuts. It celebrates. I, I know how excited Laker fans are. What message do you have for Laker Nation? Well, the only message that I have is, you know, now you, you guys don't have to hate me. Now you can love me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey it, was it was always a lot of love. Just so much respect. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, right. Thank you so much. All right, Trez. Uh, so happy to have you, and thank you for taking the time. Really appreciate it, and uh, hope to see you soon. Oh, no, no. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. He's a Laker, but I just remember so many times going, he kills us. God, I wish he could be a Laker. <laughs> uh, BT, listen, you covered him for years. Um, not only did the Lakers sign uh, Trez for two years, they – they got him away from the Los Angeles Clippers. He was part of the heart and soul, especially that bench with Lou Williams. How surprising was this for you, and what kind of player are they getting? What kind of guy? You know, I was truly surprised because I didn't hear his name come up until the very end of that day where it was starting to happen. The one thing I do know about Trez that really impressed me a lot, when he first got there, he was a third-string center for the Clippers. So yeah. after games were over, he went ahead back to Staples Center to the practice facility to work on his game at 11 o'clock at night, 12 o'clock at night, 1 o'clock. He's always worked to improve, just like he said, and it made him to the player he is today. And as he just told you in the interview, he was going to work on it again after the interview session was over with you guys. So that tells me how dedicated he is, how driven he is. Laker fans will love him because I enjoy watching him play. And I really enjoy watching him progress as a player and as a young man over the years with the Clippers. Good stuff, BT. Brez, what does he add to this Laker roster when you look at it? Well, I think, first of all, the motor. I mean, just a high-energy, high-octane uh, way of, of playing the game. And I always appreciate that. Like you, it's kind of like, wouldn't it be something the Lakers could get him? Yeah. <laughs> and also some consistency. All right. You had uh, Dwight and JaVale, and they kind of do their thing in the game. Sometimes uh, JaVale wouldn't finish the game. Sometimes uh, Anthony Davis would. But you never quite knew what you would get from the Lakers centers. Uh, here, you know what you're going to get. You're going to get at least 15 points and close to 10 rebounds every single night, 25 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever the coaching staff decides. And like BT, I was shocked when, when this is the guy the Lakers got with their big mid-level exception. I didn't see it coming. No, I, I, I kind of aimed downward. I thought yeah. Joe Harris would be a nice shooter. Davis Bertans would be a nice big man who can also hit threes. I thought for sure he was going to stay with the Clippers for three years, 40 million.